Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is May 5th, 2019, Sunday's edition. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. And on the website, you see we do have a Twitter link, Twitter link down there at the bottom of the page on the right there. Please subscribe to that also. I'm going to hand this straight over to Miss Vegas, and she's going to give us our weekly watch list. Okay, guys, have your pen ready. We have pen items because I like to give a bigger list on Sundays to prepare you and also to give variety to people that like sometimes different kinds of stocks based on the price. Um, so we're going to talk about Ruby, we're going to talk about QD, TEUM, Disney, DHT, QUMU, X, Etsy, NWL, and Shop. So let's get beginning and let's get going. So we are going to start with Ruby this is the Rubicon project, and you know what? This stock's made a nice new 52-week high. Um, this stock actually had its earnings, so this is an earnings winner. Uh, they did uh, make their report uh, on May 1st. They said that their first quarter revenue grew 30% year over year, and that is just phenomenal. A lot of the revenue ball revenue, um, so you can actually, uh, if you wanted to read more about the... Um, company you can but this company is located in california they are an advertising exchange and what they do is they help websites and apps uh, to help sell ads easily and safely so you know if you have an ad that you want on a website or on an app they help you do that so they help you brand your product and um, as a result as you can see a lot of the money came from mobile because people are on their phone and mobile so um, you know, they're clicking on the ads probably and uh, generating some revenue from advertising transactions each month. So Ruby is the Rubicon project. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim because I still expect a continuation of the stock. And I'm going to let Jim give us some. So Jim, over to you. All right. Well, this is definitely the year's chart on Ruby, R-U-B-I. We were watching this last year, as you can tell, with my orange lines right here. And I'm also doing a case study this week with the Vortex Indicator. So I'll be adding it to all my charts and learning how to use this indicator. So this is a year's chart. I see that we did have a year high right here right at 732 with a resistance that we had to break down here right around 690, 693. So I'm going to go to the 20 day. Look at the 20 day, one hour. I always like to look at it first. I see another support level right down here, which is really solid at 688 for a low, low support. That can't go any lower than that. And we have due resistance high. We got a breakout here at 733. It did close at 732, and that was the day high that came out. And this has had a beautiful, beautiful, let me repeat, beautiful three day run from 636 all the way to 732. So now I'm going to be posting the, let me see, the one minute a one day three minute and I do see my support level right here at 694 I don't want to see it go any lower than that that's going to be my red line support with the first one right here at 618 and that's going to be a good solid buy but strong buy at 694 and the resistance we got a break we did try to break that a few times it did hold a consolidated movement right here right around the 732 area we did pull back to that first support at 724 and that's when we got a break at 732. So I'm going to go back here to the year's chart again that I have. Well, let's see what the six month tells me. Six month, we've got that low support right down here at 694. I don't want to see it go any lower than that. We did try to break that at one time five days ago, last Monday. And so we, we created a, came back, pulled back to around 6, 589 and then bounced up. And this is really a nice looking chart, Ruby is. So we want to break the resistance level of 732 and try to get it up to my next three lines, 739, 748, and 755 with a high up here right around 780, 785. And that's RUBI. Keep her on watch. And thank you, Miss Vegas, for that outstanding fundamental outlook. Yeah. So the next one we're going to talk about is QD. And so QD is QD. And, and you know what? We gave you guys this stock on a Sunday edition, and back then it was $6.42 where it had closed on the previous Friday. And look where this is now. 
I mean, this company is just doing so well. This is Qudian. Uh, it's, um, you know, China, it's a China stock. So you have to watch that one. Um, but, you know, I told you what they do. They're a financial technology company and um, they like to create value for young people and they offer consumer financial products and services to everybody. And uh, they started trading on the um, New York Stock Exchange in October of 2017. So under two years, um, they do have, believe it or not, um, over 70, um, seven, uh, 71.77 million users of the app. So this is just really interesting. So you guys can check it out. Uh, you'd have to translate the site. Um, but they have a lot of products. So they're available on the Android. Um, but you can check out what they do. Uh, but they do have all kinds of things too. They have, um, you know, sports bags, beauty, like beauty products, watches, jewelry. I mean, you can go in here and buy all these things online. So check it out if you want to check out Cutian. Um, but I got to say, this is looking like a real QD to me. I wouldn't be surprised to see this stock head into double digits. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jim because I am super bullish still on this stock. I don't think this one's over. Oh, yeah. We've had QD on watch for a while. Definitely. We've talked about it before. She did bounce up from a good low down here right around 473 in the last couple of months. Ran all the way up here to approximately, we had an 851 high on Thursday. Then it kind of consolidated a little bit with a good good little hammer here at, at 817. That's where she closed at. And I'm going to pull up the yearly chart. We do have a year high up here at 1296 with low support at four bucks. So it's been on a teeter, it's been on a roller coaster ride all the way up with newer highs or higher lows and higher highs on three different indicators. So I'm going to draw another resistance line, which I see right here. This 7833 is what we got to break to get passed up to the next climb, and that's going to be right around the 851 that come real close to hitting that Thursday. And then we got another one right here, and I'm going to draw it right around 868. So let's pull up the 20 day now. Look at the 20 day. I also see that the vortex indicator has moved up here in the last month. So this is a good little operation when you're looking at the yearly daily to look for a swing trade on it if it rises above that red line. Let's pull up the 20 day. And there we go. So I'm seeing a support level right here at 805 and then another one right down here at 792 with another one right here at 780. So those are going to be my three support levels. I don't want to see it go down here to 765 which it could but that's going to be your low, low buy entry because that was a previous high that we had on Wednesday. She did break resistance of 858, or I mean, she, she did break the resistance up here at 846 and traded the new high pre-market after hours at 858 and then pulled back Thursday to low support right here at 779. And I see that as an indicator here on Wednesday morning. We had that little high right there. See what I'm talking about? That little breakout, and then she pulled back to the previous high and bounced on up. So this is why I'm going to go ahead and chart this out. I'm going to look at the three month, see if I can get these resistance levels. We got a low support down here at 779, which I mentioned before, with the, another one right here at 815. So we got 779. And I'm going to say, I'm going to call it even at 805, is where she's got a hold. Break a resistance of 851 to a new high of 868, and hopefully this thing can move on up. But Friday it did consolidate after a good five-day run, and that's a beautiful chart right there when you're looking at gaps that have been made in the last two, three days, last week. So usually I go into my five-day plan on something like this, and I expect it to consolidate for one day, and then maybe another day, and then she'll go ahead and start breaking new highs. And this is going to be QD. It's a stock we like. Definitely. And this is another one we're going to mention is T-E-U-M. Right. So T-E-U-M, I mean, you know, Jake from Transbutter uh, showcased the other day with the platform, but T-E-U-M is one of his picks. Uh, it's a company. They're into technology. 
Uh, they do have earnings, though, coming up very soon. I believe it's going to be on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, but, you know, this company, uh, TOM, they, you know, they provide cloud services. They're a software as a service company. They're into Internet of Things and they're into machine to machine, uh, which is known as M2M. Uh, so don't know if you hear that terminology a lot. People hear about the IoT. We also have M2M, which is the machine to machine. Um, so you can connect anything from any device, any network, anywhere. And you can check about what the company <clears throat> really does. But they're basically into mobile cloud. And um, they do a lot of product offerings uh, to technology and global leaders like Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, Twilio, Twitter. So um, they provide a lot of cloud technology. So watch out for the earnings. Um, stock is looking super strong on TEUM. And you know what? I kind of even like the price of the stock right now. Uh, still under $5. Um, it's had a really nice outside day. I really like that the MACD was, had crossed over. And it looks really good for a swing trade and a continuation. So you could still trade this considering probably the next couple days. Um, and just, I guess, you know, some people that don't want to hold it into earnings can certainly sell it off uh, before the earnings, just in case. You just never know. And some people like to be risk takers and they'll hold into earnings. So I think Jake said he's going to hold, but everyone just, you know, make your own decisions. Uh, but still like it for a continuation, at least prior to earnings. So I think there's still room for the stock to go and break that $5 mark. Jim, over to you. All right. T-U-M. Good call for Jake. He likes to see them trends that move up on this trade. We have definitely seen a good week and a week seven day trend on the way up. And we do have a year high right here, right around the 6593 area. Pulling up the one year just to make sure. Yeah, that 593 was a year high. And I'm going to chart that in here right there. The resistance we got to break is going to be that 573. So we got that 593 year high. And I guess it didn't go under, so I'm going to. Bam! There we go. So now I'm going to pull up the 20 day. That's the resistance we got to break. First resistance we got to break is going to be that 510 area. And I'm going to pull up the 20 day right now. You can see that 510 on the 20 day high we had at 515. I see a first support right here at 477. And then I've got two more that are right below it. And that's going to be right here at 468 and 458. With a no lower, I don't want to see it go any lower than that 446. So with the resistance we got to break now is going to be the the 490 and that should raise it up to about 501 that's where the top of that channel exists on the separate movement we've had for the past week so if we break that 501 we're going to go to the 510 and then we're going to break that resistance that I showed you on the year's chart of 593 well we got the 510 539 571 and 593 try to get to a double top on this trade but that resistance we First need to break is going to be that 5 that I mentioned and then this 510 is very important. And I do see another one right here at 522 that might have a little hesitation right there to move on upwards. But this is a beautiful upward channel that we worked on for a week. Let's see a little bitty pullback and then bounce on up and break them highs. And that's T-E-U-M. Next one we're going to talk about is one of my favorites and one of Miss Vegas' best plays of the year or one of them in a way. And that is Disney. Everybody loves Disney. Oh, yeah. So speaking of Disney, uh, I'm going to look to plan a conference uh, next year in Orlando in May 2020. So if anyone is interested in a traders conference, we'll be having speakers and it'll be in Orlando and uh, it'll be done over a weekend. And then we'll have a Memorial Day fun day celebration. And then we have uh, on one of the other days, the next business day, we'll actually have trading live together. Um, so I do have some uh, speakers that have already committed. And so I will release more details once I have the venue confirmed and pricing. Uh, but if you are interested, by the way, in coming to Orlando uh, in the land of Disney, uh, please email me vegas at ilovestocks.com just to let me know your interest. And this way I can keep you informed as information 
is evolving on this Traders Conference. Um, so speaking of Disney, uh, they do have earnings coming this week. So I mean, the stock's had a nice pullback uh, from the run that it's had. It had a beautiful run. It has pulled back. And, um, you know, maybe people are waiting to see what's going to happen with the earnings. Um, you know, so I guess, the, you know, wait and see. So some people are waiting for pullbacks. I know quite a few people that are long on Disney. Um, they haven't added more. They were waiting for the pullback. So maybe now that it's pulled back, they may start still adding um, and just holding it right through earnings. I'm not going to be surprised if you could see this stock down the road. 150s plus plus uh longer term for people that like long but you know what in the meantime no position i don't even have any options on it i will visit it tomorrow uh, just from an earnings play um so i don't have any options to share with you at the moment um but i will look to share one with you guys tomorrow i might even post it on twitter if you follow on social media then you'll be able to get the alert in real time so, Jim, over to you on the Disney chart. Disney's earnings will be out on the 8th, so I'm excited to see what happens. Last time earnings came out, they were very good, but Miss Vegas mentioned to me that the price might already be injected in the trade. But what I'm seeing on Disney right now is a five-day pullback. So that five-day rule goes into effect with me with it hit that bottom support level right there at 132.58. Let me pull this up on a 20-day. This did have a beautiful little breakout, and she kept running. Then last week, we had the five-day pullback, I think, getting ready for earnings. So let me pull up the 20-day right now. We did have a low support right here at 132.63. She did hit the previous highs we had where it consolidated on the ascending triangle breakout, pennant flag. And she went ahead and ran off, ran on up off that flag right here. You see that what I'm talking about, the ascending. Let me go ahead and draw this trend line on here. And that goes from probably right about here all the way up. And then you have this other one here where it has, I would say, a resistance line. And we did have that breakout from right there. And then the next week she ran up and created new highs from that 132.58 area all the way to 143.05. So now we've had what you call, I'd say, a strong pullback to that previous resistance line at 132.58. And then Friday, she bounced up pre-market and just kind of consolidated with just a small little pullback. So what I want to see this thing do is people start getting interested in it again and break this new high up here at 143.05. And we've got a couple resistances we got to break on the way up, the first one being here at 135.37. And then the second one on the way up the mountain to this resistance level at 138.28 to get it on high to the this here. This is what you call a head and shoulders. When it did get up to the top, she did pull back to that neckline. And that neckline right here was right at 132.58. So let's watch Disney next week. Earnings are coming out on the 8th. And that will be on a Wednesday, I think. Pretty sure of it. And let's have a good week, good day. So the next one we're going to talk about is Miss Vegas brought up to me, and it's a shipper stock. It's DHT. Yeah, so you know what, DHT, I mean, I've never tried stock, um, but they uh, definitely have earnings actually this coming Friday. But the reason I picked it, I mean, I, I actually like the stock and the charts going into earnings, not trading it and holding through earnings, but trading it up to the week leading uh, of this Friday. Um, this is a really nice, nice chart. I mean, it's got 52 week highs, got a nice uh, pocket pivot, you know, pocket pivots, like one of my favorite things. And I really like the channel that DHT's on, like, you know, considering all the shipper stocks out there. This one looks really volume that too, uh, you know, and the stock is definitely, your uh, bands are nice and high um, and the stock is overbought. So we do have earnings coming up. Um, but it's on a beautiful uptrend. So, I mean, I would like to still keep trading this stock, not in the stock at all, just saying I would like to look at it uh, to, for a continuation up until earnings. So I'm going to tell Jim, let's give us the uh, support and resistance there. Yes, ma'am. We did break out of a year high that we had here at 559. I called the resistance right here at 550 is what I would say. So that's going to be my pullback support level at 550. We 
did it, you know, this thing pulled back pretty low down here at 361, right back there when, the, oh, in January. Had a little resistance level there, but it is a kind of a neat little up and down chart. We did not want to break that resistance at 550, and it did pull back to to almost a year low there at 357, which would hit, hit 361. And then here in the past four months, he's ran all the way up to create that breakout of that previous high we had. And I'm just going to pull up a year's chart because I'm curious of what a year looked like on this one here. See, here you are on a three-year chart with a $6 high. So that's where I'm going to put my target for it to break. That $6, then we're going up and move up more. So your first support, let's call it right down here where it belongs, right at 551. Then if she can go ahead, your second support is going to be the candle wick here at 559. And we did close at 570, so that's going to be your solid first support. And what we need to break are the next two resistances, and we need to get it above the 575 to 578 area for the breakout up to $6. And then we'll see what goes on from there. This is DHT, and good luck to you. And the next one we're going to mention is going to be QUMU. Yes. So do you even know what it does? Not until you well, introduced it to me. This is a technology company. They do computer peripherals. Um, again, you can check out the website for those of you that like to. But I do want to mention they do have an event in London. In uh, It's called the Summit 2019. And uh, they will be there. So you can check out and see what they do. They're going to have the 2019 London Summit. Um, and it's, it's, you know, more of like a, they're going to have basically a lot of demonstrations and obviously networking events. But this is out in London. So obviously if you're in London, you may want to check it out. Um, but uh, definitely uh, you can check out what this company does do as well. Um, you know, you can see that QUMU has a beautiful, beautiful chart. I mean, they are a very good company. And I think even financially, so they do. They're passionate. They're into into. They're into videos. They're a technology company that provides enterprise video solution for clients. Okay, so if you, you know, I wonder. I'd have to research a little more, but um, they are into big time video webcasting. Um, so very similar, I think, maybe to maybe. Zoom does, but I'll have to take a look and see what they do. Um, but certainly, uh, you can check out what they do, and uh, definitely the chart is a beauty. And I think that we've had this one active, Jim. Do we not? Yeah. When did we alert this one here? Yes, Friday. We mentioned it. So we mentioned it when on it Friday. Up on the scanners. On Q, yeah. So Q U M U. I have to say, I regret that I didn't see it sooner. Uh, caught it uh, already when it had quite a move, um, but still room for the stock to have a continuation. So, Jim, over to you on that chart. Oh, yeah. Q -U -Q 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 -U -M -U. It's a new ticker to me, too, so, you know, I, I have to kind of stutter a little bit to get it out. But I'm going to post up this three-year chart and show you what we're looking at on the three-year. And I think I have it up already. Yes, I do, sir. What's the matter you? We are up here getting close to a to a, a resistance level at 480. That's what we got to break to get it up to a couple new highs. And the year high on a three year is 550. And I need to change this tool over to put that right there where I need to get this resistance level. And that's right around 494 area. Okay. So look at the the weekly chart on this thing. It ran all the way down here from 250. All the way up to 460 with a big, huge, beautiful breakout candle on Friday. So when I see something like this, I usually see a little pullback, and then I see a re re regain. And we're going to pull up the year's chart. Look at the yearly. That's three month. We did have a hard little resistance right here that we had to break at 295. It did do that last week. Plus. And then we had another resistance we had to break here at 327. Then in the last three days, it did it went ahead and created three white soldiers that bounced up on. That's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with each base of the candle higher than the previous one. With a resistance up here close at 460, 
with a 475 high that day. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day right now. I like looking at the 20 day and I'm always looking down here at my new indicator that I'll be studying next week is the Vortex indicator. Feel free to look that up and add it to your arsenal of tools. And there's always a new in the room. I always point out a new indicator that I'm looking at every week and I call it the case study. So I got a red line support level right here at 424. That's where I don't want to see it go any lower. If it does, at 402, 401, which is a very uh, mild employee number, 401 is a strong buy entry. And that was where it broke out Friday morning. And then we see we had an ascending triangle right here, which created that breakout. And we also had a pennant flag right here, which created the previous breakout. So that's kind of beautiful when I see those chart patterns. I'm a chart pattern kind of person. And Miss Vegas, she does the fundamentals of a stock, and she's also a good chartist too. So we got a resistance, we got a breakout here at 467. If we can break that 467 to 475, we got new highs, and I want to see that 494 area. But this is going to be an interesting trade to watch next week with that beautiful weekly chart pattern that we took off last week. And that's QUMU. And next one's going to be US Steel, it's called X. Oh my gosh, so this is a great stock. So, you know, this one here was alerted by Paula and she alerted it really from an options perspective. She said, you know what, guys, um, you look at United Steel Corporation uh, as the um, as an options trade. And she alerted this one when uh, with the strike price of, I think it was $16. Let me just pull it up here. Uh, so she gave us the alert here on the auction side for a $16 strike. I think at the time the stock was trading around $15 and change. So low 15s. And what a call because that went to all the way $16.99. I mean, these option calls are not even expired. So I just want to give you like an example of how, you know, small accounts, again, I always talk about helping small accounts. And I'm telling you, these options really, really, really help small accounts. Um, and especially when you buy a stock at the momentum. And I think even, you know, Donald Trump's tweet about invest, you know, about um, the steel investment and the, and the money going into Pittsburgh um, is really, really maybe affected that. But uh, Paula gave an alert on X and the call she gave, let me just pull it up because I got to share it with you guys. Um the alert she gave on X. Okay, let me just. Sorry, I just got a, so many option calls that we have during the day, but I want to pick Paula's in particular. Oh, here it is. So she gave the alert for the May tenth expiry, sixteen dollar call on X, and you know what? They were thirty five cents, and they're over a hundred percent. And, you know, if you put in $35, even, you know, if you want to just try out options, put in 35 and you double your money that same day, that's amazing. And that's just based on one contract. Imagine you would have bought 10. You put in 350, you would have made 350. So you doubled your money same day. Um, so this is excellent, uh, a way to grow the account even to start, because I mean, obviously $35 is investment if it goes the other way then you just cut your losses option call back and went to let's say twenty dollars then you should just cut your options and sell it and your loss is fifteen dollars you know you're not going to let your option decay um because it can decay pretty quick if it goes direction but you know what everyone's still holding the option call on this only because it doesn't expire and we're still bullish on the chart um the other thing is we also alerted uh, a similar call to X as well. We rolled it up and we did give another option call on X as well. Um, and so people will be trading those. As well. So, um, you know, we have $17 calls now too. So you may want to look at these tomorrow. I will look to probably share another idea. But the other thing too is I even shared this as a day trade to people that don't trade options, but people that like the um, higher price stocks, the over $10 stocks. And we had quite a few people that traded uh, the stock at $16.01, and they just day traded and they closed it around, I think, $16.88 around there. 
um, or maybe they closed it just a little shy of that. So you know what? Good for them. So congratulations to even the day traders. And if you're swing trading the stock, I like it. So Jim, I want to hear about that chart. Yeah, this, you know this. I've learned this thing way back in in March, and when I learned it, it was a lot higher price. It was around eighteen eighty three. So when I when I think about that, I'm thinking this thing got oversold, and it it just uh, I mean this was at a year bottom here at fourteen sixteen Thursday, and I wish I'd have paid a little bit more attention to this and kept this on my watch list for sure. But you see it had that 14, 16, and I alerted this sucker when it was right around this area right in here where I seen that double bottom, and I thought it was going to go ahead and break out and move on up. Actually, it moved on down, and for the last month, it's been down here, and then it hit that low of 14, 16, and this is a stock that should be bullish right now. But I think a little bit of the trade deal had something to do with it in the trade talks because we were up here at a 39, 23 high at one time for a double top breakout. And then for a whole year, it's done nothing but sell off. So Paula called this right at the bottom. And this stock here down here at 1416. So we got to break this resistance level that I see right here, which was a previous bottom, right around the $17 area. And if we can break that 17, we're going to bring it up to new resistance levels of about where I called it at. A little probably 1847 up here to this other double bottom, which is right around $19. So yeah, that's a real nice call. She kept an eye on it, and it did, and it has pulled back severely to the 1416 low. And this is U.S. Steel. You know, it should be moving up, especially with the building of the of the fence that we're having south of us, and everything else that's going along with it. So let me pull up the 20-day chart real fast, and just kind of have a small look at it again. We did have a hard sell-off right here, also, and that was right around this $18 level that I was calling at 1883. And she pulled back here to this 1416 low. And then she had a nice little run Thursday and then a continuation with a small little descending pattern to a support level at 1483 and then ran up. So the next resistance we got a break is going to be this 1690. And it did close at 1688 up to this new high here at 1740. And then move on up to the new resistance levels of that $20 area. And that's really what I want to see. I want to see it go past that $20. This is going to be a good one to watch and keep on watch. We do see that the vortex did break out on her call. It did break above that red line, and that's a positive move. And also the RSI looks like it's a little oversold, overbought right now, but I'm not going to I'm not going to believe that because the volume bars have picked up big time too. As the volume bars did show a little divergence on the way down, the stock went up. So this is X. Keep it on watch. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Etsy. Oh my gosh, the cute little arts and crafts star. I love Etsy. And you can get lost going on the website, you know. And I still I love Etsy only because, I mean, besides the fact that it's a great <laughs> stock right now, and I actually still like it long term. Um, so I'm looking at this from an options perspective as well, or for those of you that like larger price stocks, I mean, I still like the stock. There is earnings also coming this week. <clears throat> what I like about it, you know, it, it gives people the opportunity that have a home-based business to sell their, or, you know, their, their crafty people. Like, it's a really amazing. I mean, I've bought a few things from Etsy. Um, and one thing that I bought recently, which I haven't even used yet, but I will show it to you guys when I use it because it was custom made. But there was a lady on there, because I have Gucci, my dog, and he is a Maltese purebred. So there was a lady that makes these, like, uh, stickers, like, but they're decals. And she had a beautiful one made of a Maltese. And she can custom make it so that it has your dog's name on it. And it was so cute. And I'm like, she showed pictures of it that people have it on their car window. And I'm like, oh, my God, I need one of those, because Gucci's always with me in the car. And I've had people even stop me and say, what's your dog's name? He's so cute. What's your dog's name? Because he's always looking out the window and they're wanting to know his name. So I thought, you know, I should get one of those stickers that's custom made for him that has his name on it. So I did get the sticker in the mail. It's uh, beautiful. Um, it's not like a flimsy little thing. So I'm going to show you once I have it posted on my car 
my car right now. Don't even ask me. It's in the mechanic right now. <laughs> and my mechanic's on vacation, so I won't have my car back yet. But when I get my car back and the car is washed, because um, I'm very picky about the car looking clean, um, I will then apply this special sticker that she made and wait till I show it to you guys. It is just amazing, amazing talent on Etsy. So Jim, back to you on this chart so I don't go over uh, ranting on Etsy, but I do really like the talent there, but I like the company and I think it's been great for people with a home business and I think it's gonna have probably some very good earnings. Um, so let's hear about the chart because I am bullish on Etsy. Yeah, I, I like to paint and I signed up, oh, <clears throat> I think a year ago to sell some of my artwork on uh, Etsy, but I never did get around to it. But uh, Etsy's earnings are coming out also the next week, and that's this coming week, so that's something to keep an eye out for. We did have a pullback support level right here, right, and I'm going to call a low support right around 66.50. With the first support level in this little channel area of 68.78 to 69.49, it's going to be that. I don't want to see it go any lower. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> get, get a little drink of water. <clears throat> sixty-eight seventy-eight is going to be that second support with your first one right here, right around sixty-nine forty-nine. The resistance we got to break is definitely going to be the previous high that we had on Friday, right there at seventy oh nine. And I've got a seventy twenty-seven on this baby. I'm going to pull up the year's chart and look at it one more time. We've got a high. On the year, right there at 73.35, and we got a resistance we got to break between that. Looks to me like right around, let me magnify this up just a little bit. We got to break that resistance there at 70.13 and get up to a new channel of resistance up here by 7.20, 7.14 to 7.52, and then if we can break that, we can break the year's high at 73.35. And you can see we're in a new channel right here and we did have a lower high and then it finally broke out and if we can break this 70 27 resistance then we're going to go ahead and see new highs on this stock and I'm really excited to hear about the earnings on this trade and let me pull it up to the one minute three minute I see resistance level right here at 69.95 look where we are after hours you see the base of this candle wick that we had on the day high at 7009 now I call the wick the basis a stronger resistance level and I call the wicks a free gift but if we can break that base at 6995 which we did get after hours and move on up we're going to see that 7027 so this is the way it's going to call it out low support at 6784 second support at 6878 First support right here at 69.49 with a resistance double top breakout at 60.95 with new highs coming up to 70.27 and that year high which I want to see and I'm going to pull that up because I don't quite remember what it was is at 73.35 and if we can break that double top high that will be a pretty nice present. If not maybe it'll pull back to the previous two two highs and that was right around that 70 20 something i mentioned and then that 70 50 area and that's etsy and then we got another one we're going to speak about man this is number eight working on number nine nwl yes yeah, so this is the second last one so nw one that um you know this is like the rubbermaid brands and uh you know they uh already had earnings by the way on uh, Newell Brands, and uh, the earnings is done. So this is also an earnings mover, and um, I do want to mention, I believe that the CEO is retiring at the end of this quarter. Uh, he's been there since 2011, um, so he will be retiring. And uh, they did have some pretty positive earnings. Um, their expenses came down, and um, they also have... Um, the first quarter, they have 423 million shares. It's a huge float, uh, which is unchanged since last year. And, um, the, you know, this company, it's not just Rubbermaid. I mean, if you guys look at Newell Brands, I mean, they even make my my favorite candles called Yankee Candles. And I love those candles because the, bur the burn time so long. 
Um, but you can check out Newell Brands. Uh, they make Rubbermaid. You know, people go camping. You know the camping gear gym, the brand oh, called yeah. Coleman? The Coleman. They got a lot of stuff on here. I'm showing they it up on the Coleman. website. I mean, you can check out the website and show, it, and show it to people. Uh, but they have, like, everything. I mean, they make Coleman. They make Papermate. Uh, Reynolds. They make baby products like Graco. They make Baby Jogger. Um, Coleman, I didn't even know they had made. But they make even Chesapeake Bay Candles, Yankee Candles. They also make the appliances, you know, Crock-Pot. They make Sunbeam. They make Oster. They, you know, Rubbermaid containers. And uh, just amazing, amazing, amazing big. But anyways, the reason I want to mention this, too, is, you know, Carl Icahn, uh, you know, he's a big investor in this. And, you know, according to the 13G, um, he is invested in Rubbermaid. And, well, I say Rubbermaid, but the ticker is NWL. And, um, you know, he bought this at $26 a share. Now, now that the earnings is up and over, I mean, we see there's a bit of an, there's an earnings mover on the stock. So, I mean, that's great that it's had this move. So now we need to see if there's going to be some sort of continuation um, with the with the stock because it has pulled back from, if you think about when he bought the stock, he paid $26. So, I mean, he's still in the red, but you know what? He's holding his position. He believes in the stock. He's not sold any shares, and he plans to hold according to all the filings we've seen. So, um, you know what? That's a good sign. And, uh, you know, Jim, let's hear about the uh, Rubbermaid chart. I'm NWL. shocked. I'm shocked that it's this cheap, too, with all the brands that it has. This hit a well, year low. Well, you know low. what? I've actually traded the stock, too, and owned it. And the stock hasn't really done much. And I've, had, I've actually had the stock, held it. It moved a little sold it, took profits. And I'm talking about last year. Mm. And since then to now, like it really hasn't done much until now with the earnings. So I'm really surprised it's this low too. So yeah, let's this, keep a watch. This, this is incredibly low for a trade like this. This had a double top resistance up here right around 27.71, 27.68, somewhere in that area with a $28 high. And then it just, incredibly, it's way oversold my book, way oversold. It, down 100% last week and then we had that big breakout on Friday and the vortex on it's showing across up on the yearly chart which means we can get above this red line and hit a resistance level right here right around the oh I'm thinking maybe a 131.39 area so it's showing a lot of indications that it's way oversold the RSI also looks a little overbought, but man, with a bounce like that from 1357 all the way up to 1663, that's a $3 gain in a week. So let's pull up the 20 day chart and look at the 20 day. I like looking at the 20 day after I look at the year. It gives me a support level idea right here, right around the 1854, no lower than that. If it goes lower than that, got another one right here. I'm going to draw a trend line in there at 1519. We did break out from them from the previous day up here at 1432. So I see a resist support level right here. I see it coming forming right down here on about 10 days ago. So I'm going to turn that into a red line. That's the way I call a low support and I know where I'm looking at. With another support level right here, that's low. $15 is low, low, way oversold in my book. Okay, so I want to make that clear. Then I see another support level right here, right around the 1552 area. So that's going to be my my first support. I'm my third. I'm going to turn that into a red line real fast. Call that the third. And then I've got a first second support level right here at 1584, with the first one right down here at 1609. So any of them areas are going to be a strong buy. If it does kind of sneak down here. That's going to be a, a historical strong buy at $15. We do have an ascending breakout pattern going on. And we did have a high right into the market close at 1670. And we did close at 1673. So with resistance, we got a break. It's going to be that 1692 area. And then I'm going to pull up that year, pull up that year's chart again, get another look at it. And I got a pivot point area on the chart for the yearly right down here at 1786 1792 1790 so that's the target for this trade is going to be right there at 1790 and that's a pivot point 
and we do have a pivot point gap that's up here right around the 2043 area and I'm going to draw that trend line in there so this to me is way oversold and I do think we're on the start of a breakout move and we've got to hit that pivot point area at 1790 and that's NWL and I'm definitely going to keep this on watch after I've seen the product line it's just amazing because I, I buy a lot of stuff that's on there and I got rubber made in my kitchen I got a Mr. Coffee I got you know coolers uh, I've been buying from this company for a long time not even know it the next one we're going to talk about is one of Vegas is really she really got excited about last week and everybody likes it and she loves it and that's going to be shop Shopify oh my gosh so first of all it's Canadian company. and so for those of you that may not know this is a Canadian company out in Ottawa and so what a run this has had and what a stock. I mean, this thing's just been amazing. We were able to squeeze these shorts and, you know, bought at this call. So I alerted an options call on Shopify and the option call I gave was 85 cents and it was expiring for Friday, May 3rd. And can I just tell you, this was a very stressful trade. I'll tell you why. So people bought it for 85 cents. Some people, when it went up 100%, they took profits. And then there were some people that, you know, still held the stock, still held the calls because they, they said, oh, it doesn't expire till Friday. I'm still going to hold it. And then, you know, there was a couple days last week where the market was kind of acting up where it ran. And then suddenly it just like pulled back, pulled back, pulled back. And all these like stocks like Facebook, Apple, um, they all, you know, they all pulled back reacting to whatever was going on in the markets, you know, after they had the bomb C meeting. And it's like, why is everyone like, why are the stocks acting like this? And it was, there was no need because the earnings was good. Everything was strong. So there was no need to, let's say, panic on the option. However, I had people messaging saying, oh my gosh, I'm a little bit nervous with my option call. What should I do? And so I said, look, my opinion, I'll just give, you know, you, you still decide what you're going to do because it's your trade, your account. But I said, here's my strategy. I said, you know, there's no reason for the pullback. You know, you've got to just ignore the noise. I'm looking at the tape and uh, the tape showed me there was still heavy, heavy buying. There's a lot of block trades and heavy buying going on. And I said, I would still hold the calls. Um, I even actually gave a new call for the 265 strike. And uh, those were very cheap. They were a dollar and uh, each contract, so $100. And you know what? Those turned into $600 profits. Uh, people made four or 500 bucks just on one call, uh, even from the $1 option trade. So, you know, we did, we were able to ride the wave on the, on the stock. And part of it had to do with following the fact that the earnings was done. Um, you know, the chart was bullish, was making new 52 week highs. Heavy block buys were coming through. And I noticed on the chart on Friday that around 1230, there were two, sorry, three huge block trades and the stock had pulled back. And I thought, hmm, you know what? This stock's going to make a higher high later on today. You're just going to have to wait it out. And you know what? Good, good that we did because people actually were very nervous and, uh, you know, um, they were able to close it very, very green. They were nervous in a sense. They didn't want to lose the gains they made. It was never that the option trade fell below the entry price. So they were still good. But, you know, like your emotions play a big role. I mean, Jim can tell you about that. Oh, yeah. You know, your emotions can play a big role when you're, you get very tense when you're in a trade. And, I mean, sometimes, you know, it happens with options too, especially like when they expire the same day, your tension goes up even more. I mean, if the option expired the week after – you're not as you're not as you're not your option you're not as um, let's say nervous because it's not going to hopefully decay as much um, if it goes the wrong way. But you know what? That expires the same day. You want to be in a position to also be able to sell your option call um, to someone. And I was really surprised that people were able to sell their calls even around three thirty in the afternoon. People were selling. Like who buys an option call? that's going to expire in half an hour, you know? So I was really surprised that people still were able to sell calls at 3.30. But, hey, you know what? Uh, people could still scalp. And I'm still bullish on Shopify. 
I will be looking for some new option calls uh, this week for a roll up because the stock is bullish, new 52 week highs, and I'm really liking the way it's trading. And uh, we did a really good job on squeezing the shorts. My trend line was 263.12 back from 250. And that was a $13 move. And you know what? We nailed it. And not only did we hit that target, we broke So congrats to all the option traders and to all the bullish traders out there on Shopify. Good for you. Still bullish on it. So, Jim, let's hear about it. Yeah, as a very experienced trader, and you see something run like this, it just it kind of gets a little scary to me because this in one week ran up more than 40 bucks and $50. And, and, that, and that, to me, is just overextended but when the momentum's there you got to take advantage of it now i alerted this back to one of the founders of of stock twits when it was down here at 117 last year when we had that big crash on the spy and ever since then it's ran all the way up in five months from that 11764 area where i saw that doji all the way up to 266.40 so you know that's a huge run I mean, that's just entirely huge, especially in the last week when it ran from the resistance breakout of 266.65 all the way up, 226.65 all the way up to 266.40. And so, you know, and the resistance we got to break would definitely be the previous high that we had Friday at 266.40. So, um, you know, I, I have to take my hat off to Miss Vegas on this call because she recognizes in momentum trades when she's trading options and that's when she does the best on these is when she catches up on that momentum and if you can spot that in a trade and I do too you know I spot it all the time because I'm a scalper and I swing I'm a, I, don't know, I swing a stock maybe three days at the most and if it's not doing nothing I'm out of it but uh I just really have to give my hats off to this trade and I'm going to pull up the 20 day just 20 days ago, we were down here at 194.70, and it's had a beautiful 20-day run all the way up to that 266.40. And then look at the weekly chart down here at the bottom of 221.41 with a wick at 218. And then we closed up here at after hours at 264.03, and that's where she slid on down and, and kept that mark. So if the momentum picks up every week's a new week, and I'm going to repeat, every week's a new week. The sediment might not be the same because it did have, in my five-day rule, we did have a huge gap up. And I'm just going to see what happens Monday on this trade. This is at 266.40 is the one we got to break to new to new level highs on this trade. Good job, Miss Vegas. And that concludes yeah. all the tickers we're going to talk about on our aftermarket report. <laughs> and I know Miss Vegas will have more to say, so... <laughs> I always have something to say. I just want to say, I hope you guys have a trading week. Again, if you're interested in hearing more information about a traders conference in 2020, it'll be May 2020 in Orlando, Florida. Please email Vegas at I love stocks.com just so that this way I can add you to the list for people that want to get information. Um, so I wish everyone a great trading week and I hope that uh, you guys will do well. And uh, please follow and subscribe and get some ideas and uh, trade green. Okay. Enjoy your week. Okay, Room, remember, we're going to be talking about the Vortex indicator next week and see how it works on different time frames. And I'm going to really keep an eye. I got this idea from Jake from Trend Spider. Thank you, Jake. Really appreciate it. I'm going to add it to my arsenal and learn how to use it. And this is, and don't forget to run to our rope website, follow us on Twitter. Let me find that little website right here. We do have a Twitter link right here. You can hit that and subscribe to that. Also, ring that bell. You can ring that bell also on Stock Twits. Follow us on there. Me and Vegas have two different accounts on there, and you can find that also on the website. And that's visible. And I'm just going to pull up one of them right now. It happened to be mine. Ha ha ha. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes. And this is Miss Vegas's. She's got more followers than I do. She's more popular than I am by far. And look at her best friends are right there, Warren Buffett and that one dude that she said she met standing next to him. And this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, May 5th, 2019. And let's have a great week. Oh, I also wanted to mention the SPY. The SPY was really up there real high. 
and I think we're on to a new high on this. I think that was the double top on the SPY. Let me pull this up real fast. And I'm very bullish about next week. I think, yeah, we got to get up here to the 295 level. And I think we did break that. I'm going to pull up the year's chart. So the SPY did break the high of the year. And, you know, there's a lot of negative sentiment you hear on CNBC and everywhere else. I don't pay much attention to that gibberish. I just pay attention to what the market brings me. And we did have a, a record high last week at 294.95. And I have called this out down here at the 291.10 area. I said we were going to probably bounce up from there, and that's exactly what it did. So, after market report, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And one thing I'm going to leave with is I love stocks. We love stocks.